Tom. Jay, Mike, how are you? I'm doing great, but when you said a month out from the NFL draft, my, my heart kind of skipped a beat right there. <laughs> it's coming up quick. Yeah, the, the offseason has rolled by, hasn't it? And, and certainly uh, a lot of folks uh, that I've talked to around the Falcons are really interested in the draft because not only did the team do well last year, but because the draft was uh, so successful for this team uh, a year ago. It really was, and as the further you get away from it, the more remarkable it seems to get when you look back and you think at the time when the draft happened, there were questions about Matt Ryan, if he was going to be a big-time NFL quarterback. There are people that say that Sam Baker was a reach. They're saying Curtis Lofton is you know, going to be a good pick, but can he contribute right away? And all three of those guys just do incredible things. Matt Ryan's a rookie of the year, and Sam Baker, the injury kind of set him back, but you saw how well he did. So the further you get removed, that draft is really going to go down as one of the best in Falcons history. And it has you excited already for 2009 to see what Thomas Dimitrov and company can do with a whole year of work. you got to remember they only got that draft together with only about three months on the job. Yeah, it, was, it was absolutely incredible. And uh, I imagine uh, you and I were talking off the air about the, the players that showed up for voluntary workouts. I imagine it's Good to see the numbers are up for guys showing up for that, but also interesting with guys like Keith Brooking and others who have, have departed the franchise. It is interesting, and I talked to some guys specifically about that today. Eric Coleman, who's returning as the starting free safety, was acquired for HC last year, and Stephen Nicholas, who may actually end up taking Keith Brooking's spot. He will come in and you know be asked to compete at that outside linebacker position. And you can tell they're both a, a little bummed, you know, not to have those familiar faces around with Keith Brooking, Michael Boley, Lawyer Malloy. But, you know, they all said it's a business, and you knew that something like that was going to come sooner rather than later. And it's an opportunity for young guys to step up and show what they can do because there was a lot of depth on certain parts of the defense. There were a lot of guys who didn't see the field, and the fans might not know them by name, might not know what they're good at, but they were brought in here for a reason. Now it's their chance to come in and shine. Where do you see as the, the holes on this team? Obviously, these are voluntary workouts. You'll build some uh, through the draft, but where are the holes right now looking ahead towards the draft? Well, hole is kind of a, an interesting word because you obviously have a body at all the positions. So, you know, if the season started today, yeah, you might not have who you really want in those spots, but you'd be able to fill every spot. But I think the question marks, the parts where there's going to have to be some addressing to see if somebody can step up or if you're going to have to go out and get somebody, whether through the draft or a last-minute free agent, is going to be linebacker because you do have Steven Nicholas in there. The coach has been trying to get on the field since he was drafted in 07, trying to get him on the field more. So can he come in and start? Corey Wire on the other side was, you know, for, for a pseudo-starter, uh, the outside linebacker uh, with Michael Boley there at the last few months, but can he keep it up for a whole season? You bring in Mike Peterson, who can you know, definitely back up at all three positions, but he can be called on to start as well. And then you've got that hole where Lawyer Malloy departed at strong safety. But Thomas Dimitrov said in the Combine that this is a chance for the team to make a uh, move more to the interchangeable safeties. Uh, two guys not necessarily have two free safeties back there or two strong safeties. Some two guys who can do both roles and make the defense that much more compelling. So those are spots right there where you kind of say, okay, there's got to be some attention to be paid. Talking with J. Michael Moore, AtlantaFalcons.com. And it's, it's interesting, all this discussion has been about defense this offseason. Uh, I would imagine, and that's where they seemingly have looked uh, heavily at the combine, and I imagine that's where they're looking with their draft picks early. Yeah, common logic would suggest that. Obviously, tight end is a spot where the team could add another body. You've got two proven guys in Ben Hartstock and Justin Peel, but neither of them have made a name for themselves or put up huge numbers in the passing game. And that's a part of the offense where you think that if you could have a true pass-catching tight end, it'd be a little easier to split that seam up the middle and break a cover two zone and just really stretch the offense up the middle of the field. But that, again, isn't a spot where it's make or break and a definite area of need because you have two guys who did it all last year who were pretty good for the team. So defense is kind of that focal point. Coach Smith and Thomas Dimitrov have both kind of said, yes, that's where, you know, obviously we're going to be paying some attention. Now it's a pretty deep defensive draft. Because of that, uh, have you heard any talks about, and maybe they wouldn't say this uh, openly, but uh, do they feel pretty comfortable at number 24? Do you think 
there's a player they really like that they'd be willing to move up for. Well, that's funny because you talk to people and 24 is a pick where you would think that you wouldn't be too happy, but Smitty and Thomas both have said on multiple occasions, hey, this is a good spot. You know, they both have experience picking from there. Thomas Dimitrov coming from New England did a lot of evaluation and preparing drafts down in that lower third of the first round. Coach Smith has picked down there a couple times before, so they're happy with where they're at. They think they're going to get a good player at number 24, and when you look at, as you said, how deep the draft is on defense, maybe best player available, that hated phrase does come into question and into some use. But, you know, somebody asked me the other day about trading down or trading up, and trading up, I'm not sure because you only have seven picks in the draft this year, and, you you know, that's not a whole lot of firepower to, you know, jump up any higher, and you don't want to give up picks when you do have some bodies you need to replace. And then trading down, you know, you might lose a guy that you really like. But anything's a possibility. But from what I'm hearing and the people I've talked to, number 24, they're, they're comfortable there. And you mentioned that that was going to be my next question about uh, Thomas Dimitrov's uh, drafting style because uh, last year they, had, they, they needed a lot uh, coming in to replace. So you almost couldn't go wrong getting a franchise quarterback or a tackle. They, they needed help in a lot of different places. Do we find out now if he's a a needs-based drafter or a best player available type drafter? You definitely see, are going to see a different part of Thomas Dimitrov and his draft strategy. And he said many, many times, both just in conversation in the hallway about talking about things and in the media, that it's need-based, system-based drafting. And you look, that's what New England has done for so many years, is just trying to find where they think their holes might be, not only for the present, but even in the future. And, you know, to go ahead and start getting those guys who might help one or two years down the road. And lo and behold, look, Thomas Deku, who was drafted last year, could be called to start at safety. So you're starting to see that kind of plan coming together. But need base and system base is definitely where this team is going to continue to focus its energy. I'm always amazed when I hear those teams say they're going to take the best player available uh, because if you don't need the best player available, it seems like kind of a wasted pick. Yeah, it's almost a cop-out. You know, it's an answer of, okay, you know, don't ask me any more questions. You know, just uh, go ahead and figure out who you think the best player available is and that's who we're going to pick. But So it is kind of a dirty word or dirty phrase. You kind of roll your eyes sometimes, you know, if you hear a GM around the league say that because, you know, aren't they all the best player? Don't you want the best guy? But like I said earlier, this is an instance where you do have some positions on defense where defensive tackle, defensive end, linebacker, safety, corner, all of them you could make a case that that's where the Falcons need to go. And then you start looking at that draft board and you say, okay, there can be a good corner there, maybe an Alfonso Smith, a Darius Butler, there can be a good linebacker there, Clay Matthews. I've seen some predictions where Brian Cushing even falls, and you know that would be very interesting if that happens. Safety, you got Lewis Delmas. So there's all these guys that are there. You really do go ahead and take the best player available because you've got all these spots where it'll make sense if you go ahead and take a guy in the first round. Jay Michael Moore, AtlantaFalcons.com, joining us here on the Afternoon Blitz. And, and finally, you look at uh, at this team moving forward. I, I've been impressed with the ability to kind of, as you said, their ability to stick to the plan because they've said, look, we want to build through the draft. And we're going to pick and choose in free agency. And there's been some big names out there. And the, the Falcons have been some of the first to jump in almost every time and say, well, we're not going after big name free agents. We know who we want. We want to focus our attention to the draft. That's right. And there definitely hasn't been a whole lot of picking or choosing in the free agency period uh, here in Flowery Branch. You see a few names you know, get thrown around every now and then. But Mike Peterson and Brett Romberg right now, the only two signings in both of those guys, just right off the cuff, you look and you see where they're going to fit that supplement through free agency style that Thomas Dimitrov and Smitty have talked about, that it's going to fill roles and going to not even be stopgap players, which some teams approach free agency that way, you know, kind of a holdover until there's someone in the draft to take. Now, these guys are fit a very specific role, and that's what makes New England so successful where Thomas came from, is that everyone knows their role, and these free agents – know the exact same thing, and they're going to come in and they're going to provide a spark where they're needed. And Mike Peterson, as I said, perhaps as a starter, and Romberg as a backup on the interior of the line. 